What's up everyone, Willy Apple here, and today I'm going to be showing you how you can dual boot macOS Sonoma and macOS Sequoia simultaneously. And I'm also going to show you some tips when dual booting. But yeah, let's get started. It's actually pretty easy to do. Just follow along my instructions pretty closely. All right, so the first thing you want to do is you want to go to the website MrMacintosh.com and then you want to click right here that says Sequoia Installers. Now, next thing you want to do is you want to scroll down and you want to get the latest beta. So right now at this time of recording, it is beta one and you just want to install the installassistant.pkg file. Now it's going to take a while to download, approximately a 20 minute download depending on your internet connection. So while that is happening, we're going to do the next required step. Next thing you want to do is you want to open up Disk Utility. Inside of Disk Utility, you want to click on this button up here that says Volume. And then name the volume whatever you want. This is what I'm going to name it. And then just click on Add. This should take a long time. If it fails, just try it again. And then make sure you have a volume. And if you do not have approximately 40 gigabytes of storage available, I would recommend freeing up some storage as you go. Alright, that is all we gotta do right now until our installer is done installing. So while the installer is downloading, you can use your Mac as normal, and we'll be right back once this is done. Alright, so our package is done installing, and you can see that little box down there. All you gotta do is go into the downloads folder, open the install assistant, click on continue, install, enter your password, and then our installation is successful. And then you can move this to trash if you wanted to. Now the next part is actually the part where we install macOS 15. If you're installing beta 1, you might see Sonoma right here, but don't worry, it is Sequoia. So what you want to do is double click on the installer. And once again, you're going to see Sonoma if you're installing an earlier beta, but Apple will change this to Sequoia. To make sure you're installing Sequoia, just make sure it says macOS 15 or macOS Sequoia. Click on continue. Agree. Don't speed run the installer. If you click on continue, it will install macOS 15 on your main partition. You want to click on show all disks and you don't want to install on the partition that you made. So since we called it like and subscribe, click on like and subscribe. Then click on continue and you're going to want to select a user to set as the owner for that volume. And if you want to copy the settings, leave this checked or leave it unchecked if you don't. Then click on install, enter your admin password. And then this is the part where it's actually going to install macOS 15. So this will take a little bit, but this estimated time was optimized for older Macs with hard drives. So this should take around 20 minutes from what I've seen in the past. You can see it went from 58 to 57 to 56 pretty fast. I'll be right back once this is done installing. All right, so once you see restart your Mac, all you want to do is click this restart button. And then it will start installing macOS 15 on your secondary partition. So this will take about one minute to restart and boot up into macOS Sequoia. So the first thing you want to do is select your country or region. Basically, just going to be setting up a brand new Mac. However, this isn't a brand new Mac. So log in with your Wi-Fi. Sign in with your Apple ID if you want. I'm just going to skip for now. Agree to the terms and conditions of macOS. And then I would recommend doing local administrator account for a very specific reason for a tip that I'm going to show you. So that you can use both macOS Sequoia and macOS Sonoma by using minimal storage. Enter your password for your other user account. All right, so you're gonna see this prompt on both macOS Sonoma and macOS Sequoia. This simply is a little trick I'm gonna show you that you can access all your data from your main install of Sonoma. So I would highly recommend entering your administrator password in here. And just so you don't need to see this prompt ever again, just click remember this password in my keychain and then click on unlock. And now you have successfully dual booted it into macOS Sequoia. Now, how do you get back to macOS Sonoma? Well, the way I would recommend is going into system settings right here and scroll down to startup disk. You're gonna see all of your disks in here and there's our macOS HD and there's our Macintosh HD. To simply get back to it, all you gotta do is click this, enter your password and click on restart to get back into macOS Sonoma. And to get back into macOS Sequoia, it's the exact same thing, just go into to the startup disk settings and then click on your macOS Sequoia disk. And that's it. That's all you need to know. Now I'm going to show you a couple tips and tricks. Now the first trick I would highly recommend knowing is how to get your data from macOS Sonoma without using much storage. So here's our Macintosh HD. Let me go to the applications folder real fast. And you're going to see we have all of our applications from macOS Sonoma right here. And you could actually open them as is on macOS Sequoia, but I'm gonna show you how you can add them to the dock. So the first way is that you could just simply drag and drop them to the dock like that. And if you want to add them to the app and to 
add them to the applications folder without using any storage at all. All you gotta do is right click on one, I'm gonna click on make alias. So this is an alias right here, and all you gotta do is drag it to the applications folder. And as you can see right here, I have an alias and it doesn't use any storage at all. Well, it uses some, but just one kilobyte right here. And I would just drag it to the dock. And basically what this arrow means is that it is linking to a different file, which is a little bit bigger. And just to show you that an alias uses barely any storage, there's how much this app uses, 56.6 .6 megabytes. And there we go. That's my little tip and trick that I would highly recommend doing if you do a boot back with Sequoia and Sonoma. And this is how you use minimal storage. And aliases can be used for any file. If I want to link to my documents folder, all I gotta do is make an alias once again, and then drag your alias into your documents folder and you can link to your document. In fact, in fact, you actually don't need to do that at all. All you gotta do is drag it here to the sidebar and you have your documents folder. You could just get rid of this one and you can use all your documents on your main partition. But yeah, that is how you can dual boot macOS Sonoma and macOS Sequoia on one Mac. This is what Apple recommends doing for developers, and I do it every year, and I have no issues whatsoever, and it's the safest option to do. But yeah, thanks for watching. Comment, like, subscribe, share this with your friends, and I'll be covering macOS Sequoia and iOS 18 every time I was a new beta, and even doing a lot more content. So like and subscribe, and I'll see you in those videos. Bye!